Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Health Made Easy. I'm your host, Dr. Jason Jones, and we are continuing our series this month on men's health. And today we're going to be talking about something that, man, this has been a part of my life since I was a teenager. Uh, but I think as men get older, it's something that we just accept that we're supposed to get weaker not be as strong as we were before, you know, and granted, when you're 80, you I mean, you're not going to be 40-year-old strong, but um, you can mitigate uh, or slow down um, or at least have appropriate strength um, with age. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today and focus on today is the loss of strength with age and what you can actually do about it. Because since I was a teenager, you know, I just, I've been very much into, you know, weightlifting, strength training, you know, those kinds of things. And the older I get, the more important that I find it to be. And things like strength through range of motion, being mobile, uh, being able to do the things that, you know, I want to do for as long as I want to do them, you know, that's uh, appropriate for, you know, my fitness level. So, you know, your muscles tend to grow larger and stronger, you know, from the time we're a baby till we're, you know, we hit maybe around 30, you know, but then when we hit our 30s, you know, our muscles start to lose mass and function, you know, and this condition is called sarcopenia with aging. So sarcopenia is age-related muscle loss. Now, it doesn't have to happen in your 30s. It could be 40s. It could be 50s. It could be your 20s if you don't do anything. Now, you tend to lose more muscle mass and strength if you're physically in Active. Now, the research tells us that you can lose as much as 3 to 5% of your muscle mass if you lead a sedentary lifestyle after 30. Um, however, uh, even if you're active, you can still lose muscle mass, um, but a bit slower you know, than when you are actually inactive. So there's no specific level of muscle mass that you need to have to necessarily diagnose sarcopenia, uh, but you tend to have a reduced strength and mobility, therefore leading to a loss of muscle mass, uh, which can actually turn out to be very significant. So um, oftentimes, uh, you know, you tend to experience sarcopenia faster, you know, around the age of 75, which you think you would, but so what you're doing and what's happening at 75 likely began when you were in your 30s. It's like the things that you do in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s will dictate what you're going to look like and what how your body's actually going to function when you're 75. It just doesn't turn off, you know, um, at some point. Um, and of course, it's much faster, you know, as you age, maybe towards 80. And muscle loss is a factor in fragility and a high tendency of falls in older adults. Um, because most of the time, it's not so much that uh, older adults have a lack of balance that causes them to fall. They just don't have the strength and the muscular capacity and mobility to move appropriately. And then therefore, they end up falling. So... What are the signs and the symptoms and or the causes of age-related muscle loss or what we call sarcopenia? So as you lose muscle mass and strength with age, you tend to start seeing some symptoms such as loss of stamina, weakness, and these often limit how physically active you can be and it further shrinks your muscle mass. Sarcopenia or age-related muscle loss is normally seen in people who are inactive, but sometimes people who are active experience muscle mass loss as well. Now, when active people have sarcopenia, it often suggests other factors are contributing to it, such as a decrease in the ability to convert protein into energy, which is typically going to be poor digestion. Uh, because as you age, you also lose um, hydrochloric acid in the stomach, um, and that will uh, is where you take the proteins that you eat and your body rips them apart into the amino acids that you need as building blocks for muscle mass and healing and repairing and all that sort of stuff. So a drop in activities of nerve cells response for passing signals from the brain to the muscles to initiate movement. And this is where chiropractic care comes in, super important, uh, because it increases the communication between the brain and the body or normalizes the communication between the brain and the body so it can work correctly. 
not getting enough protein or calories each day to sustain muscle mass. You're, if you have a certain amount of muscle mass, like for me to maintain the muscle mass that I have as a 46-year-old male, I need 200 grams of protein every single day just to maintain my muscle mass and maybe even to get a little bit more muscle mass on. Um, loss of concentra- lower concentration of hormones, including testosterone, growth hormones, and insulin-like growth factors, all which tie to the things that we previously just mentioned. Now, what are some things you can do about sarcopenia or age-related muscle loss? Number one is exercise, okay? Uh, and these are in no particular order, but this is the first one we're going to cover, okay? That's a major way to handle it, is to exercise. Now, you need to engage in more strength and resistance training. You don't have to become a bodybuilder. You don't have to become a power lifter. You don't have to become a world champion in anything. But you just use different weights, you know, resistance bands, different angles to build muscle mass and strength. You have to challenge a muscle for it to get stronger, okay? Resistance training helps improve your body's ability to convert protein into energy in less than two weeks. However, keep in mind that intensity, proper number of repetitions, the frequency of exercises are important for getting the maximum benefit and with the lowest risk of injury. That's why I like, you know, strength through range of motion, um, but not so much that there's no sense in you lifting like at your max. You know, I mean, you're, you know, if you're really listening to this, you're probably not 16 year olds. You're probably not going to try to be a world champion at a one rep max lift. You know, if you're if you're working in the eight to ten to twelve to fifteen rep range, and those last few reps are tough, but they're not you know so tough that you're going to blow something out. You're probably doing what you need to do. Okay, so you can also work with a, certainly a, a, an experienced trainer if you've never done any of these kinds of things. And what you want to do before you start adding any kind of weight in there is you want to make sure your form is correct. All right. Now, you got to get enough protein and calories in your diet. Protein and calories are essential to sustain muscle mass and energy. Um, As you grow older, uh, you should eat more protein-rich foods and add enough calories into your diet. That way, you got enough nutrients uh, to build new muscle mass and strength. Okay, so... I hope this helped you out. Um, Big thing to take home is you need to be exercising. You need to be exercising at least three times a week. All the major muscle groups of your body. Ideally, you're going to be doing compound movements, which is multi-joint movements like squat, you know, deadlift, bench press, shoulder press, pull downs, you know, those kinds of things. Um, But then also making sure that you're getting enough protein based on your particular activity level. So I hope this helped you out. Uh, Forward this on to some guy that you know who just has lost his steam, uh, not as strong as he wanted to be and wants to be stronger. And then we'll see you guys on the next podcast. See you later. Bye-bye.